All right, so we saw last week that a function is continuous over an interval if we can sketch the graph of that function without having to lift the pen from the paper. So it's going to have a discontinuity at a point if it has a hole or a jump or a vertical asymptote. Now there's something, el something else we can ask about a function, which is whether the derivative of the function at a point exists. So geometrically, what we're asking now is whether the tangent line of the function at a certain point makes sense. Okay, so a function, we say that a function is differentiable at a point x equals to a if the derivative f prime of a exists, and is differentiable over an interval if it is differentiable at every point in this interval. All right, but how can a function fail to be differentiable? Well, we know more about limits now, and we know very well that limits may not exist. So the function will fail to be differentiable exactly when the limit here does not exist. So how can that happen? It's a certain number of different cases, so let's go through them case by case. Well, the first case is relates uh, differentiability to continuity. So what it says is that the function f of x, if the function is not continuous at a point x equals to a, then it follows that it's also not differentiable at x equals to a. So the equivalent statement is that if it is differentiable, then it is also continuous. Now, it makes sense, because if the function is not continuous, then it's kind of all strange at this point, so the tangent line is also not well defined. So what could happen is that the function, well, there's a certain number of cases, you could have a hole like that, could have a jump, you could have some vertical asymptote, function like this. So in all these cases, at the point where the discontinuity is, the function is also not differentiable. Now there's a proof of this statement in a textbook, a rigorous proof, but the, the idea here, so it's just a, let, let me just present a very rough sketch of the idea. The point is that what we're trying to evaluate here is the limit uh, and the definition of the derivative, but if the function is not continuous at x equals to a, then we know that the limit of f of x as x equals to a is not equal to f of a, either because f of a does not exist or because it does, but it's not the same as the limit. Now, in either cases, the numerator here will not go to zero as h goes to zero, so this limit we uh, deduce right away will be either infinite or will not exist, but in either case, the limit here does not exist, so the derivative does not exist. All right, so this is the first case. Now there's uh, other possibilities. So it's very important to note that uh, the converse statement to the previous statement is not true. There are functions that are continuous but not differentiable. So that's the second case. Well, a function, the second case is, is whenever a function is continuous, but the derivative, in other words, the limit here, does not exist. Now there's two ways that this can happen. The first case is that the left-sided limit and the right-sided limits are different. Or well, the second case is just that this limit here will just blow up to infinity. Okay, now the first case would correspond to function something like this. So at this point, if you approach this point from the left, then you see that the tangent line will have a certain slope, while if you approach the point from the right, the tangent line will have a different slope. Right, so the two limits here that define the slope of the tangent line are different. So the, the limit here is not well-defined and the function is not differentiable. So here we see that the function has a corner or a kink at this point. Now there's a very well-known example of this. So if you take the function, the absolute value function, at x equals to 0, it has a corner, and it's not differentiable at x equals to 0, even though it is continuous at x equals to 0. All right, now the second case is whenever the through the, the limit here blows up to infinity. So geometrically what that means is that the tangent line has a, an infinite slope, so it becomes vertical. So that would correspond to a function like this. So at this point here, for example, then the tangent line would be like this, which would correspond to an infinite slope. So in other words, the function here will not be differentiable at this point. So in this case, what we're going to say is that the function has a vertical tangent at this point which is also means that it's not differentiable. All right, so to summarize, there's really three cases uh, that can happen for the function to fail to be differentiable. So either the function is not continuous at x equals to a, or it has a corner or a kink at x equals to a, or it has a vertical tangent at x equals to a. But it's very important to note that uh, while differentiability implies continuity, uh, continuity does not imply differentiability. Yeah, that's correct. So function can be continuous, but not differentiable. 
All right, so let me end this video with a little challenge. So uh, last week I proved in class that 1 equals to 2, but you all found the mistake, which was that I was dividing by 0 at a certain point. So I thought very hard about it and tried to come up with a better proof, and I did. So here's a new proof that 1 equals to 2. So my challenge here is uh, that I'm asking you is to find a mistake in my proof, or if there's no mistake, then... Just tell me and uh, I'll give up my job, as I said. So, okay, so let's let's do it. So let me prove that 1 equals to 2. So consider the following function, very simple function, x squared. All right, so one thing I can do is I can rewrite x squared as follows. So x squared really is just adding x, x times, right? That's what x squared means. I'm just taking x copies of x and adding them together. All right, so now what I can do is differentiate on both sides. Now, if you use the power rule, you know that the, def uh, the derivative of x squared is equal to 2x. On the other side, I have a sum, so I can take the sum of derivatives, so I'll get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 x times. But what is this? Well, if I'm adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 x times, I just get x. Right, so I get that 2x is equal to x. Then finally, I can assume that x is not equal to 0, and that gives me that 2 is equal to 1 just by dividing by x on both sides. Isn't it cool? So I've just proved that 2 equals to 1. Now, can you find a mistake in this proof if there's 1? 